name is Shannon Tipton, and I am the owner of Learning Rebels. And Learning Rebels is a consultancy company. And what we do is we help organizations make their training stick. And I myself have been in learning and development for about 30 years. Having engagement with online learning, it's not too terribly different than having engagement within any kind of learning. And that's following just basic learning science, which is ensuring that the learning is relevant to people. And what I mean by relevant, it's that a lot of times we get hung up on the what's in it for me elements of training. And that's well and good. And we need to have that in our mind's eye when we think about Uh, learning, be it live or online. But we also need to be able to answer the so what question. And what I mean by that is people will take training, they'll participate in training and they'll go, okay, I did this. So what? How am I supposed to apply this? What am I supposed to do with it? And too often we don't answer that question soon enough in the training process and people will then check out. Once they realize how the learning is going to help them do their job better than they're in, you know? So that is the first part of making anything worthwhile, you know, for the person sitting there staring at a computer, you know, and then we can get into the, uh, you know, the basics of design, you know, it's, on online learning is simply not uploading a PowerPoint deck. You know, there's more to it than that. There's more thought to it than that. Are we helping people think, you know, nobody wants to mindlessly, you know, click the, the next button, next, next, next. And that is mind numbing. It's boring. Nobody wants to participate in that. People do want to see progression. So how are we creating, um, how are we creating elements that help them think their way through a problem and has, and does that problem relate to what they experience every day? So I think when we, uh, create online learning elements, it's about really understanding where people sit right? And it's understanding what they do. So who's your target audience for this on online learning? Who's your target audience? What is it that they do every day? What is their struggle every day? What is the barriers that they see every day that has to do with the training that you're putting in front of them? So it's about solid design. It's about creating training that is relevant. It's about helping them to think and put logical pieces together in their head. And then it's about ensuring that we understand where the learner is coming from, you know? So again, the basics aside, it really is about the learning process itself and making that engaging for people. When we consider a culture, we have to think about what is the culture that's currently sitting within organizations. Culture in of itself means what are people doing on a daily basis without thinking about it? It's their habit. Organizations work with ecosystems that become layers upon layers of different habits. And that's what generates a culture, right? So if you want to create a culture of learning, it's about really nurturing the learning environments that you already have. Now, one of the key elements here is that uh, Deloitte, Deloitte produced a report not too long ago that said uh, 46% of cultures that, of of businesses, I'm sorry, 46% of businesses that sustain and encourage a culture of learning are typically first to market. So these are mature organizations that know the importance of creating that culture of learning. And then that also means that they are 37% more productive, 
90% more innovative, that they lose less employees because the employees know that their organizations are invested in them. So there's the crux. So how do we get there from here? Well, there's a couple of paths toward success. And first it's realizing that learning and development does not own the learning culture within an organization. That's, that's, that's not all about us. We can help sustain it. We can help nurture it. We can help grow it. But building it is not about learning and development. That is about leadership. That's about managers. So that means having frontline managers on board because frontline managers will be your barrier. When it comes to giving a frontline manager the choice of, should we make more money today or should we let people study? You know what that, you know what the answer is going to be there. So then how do we make it more palatable to frontline managers and how can we build it in to their practices so then it becomes habit. So then it becomes culture. And this is where we need to tackle that. So three things that we can do. One is we can be more accepting of learning from failure. That's not to say that it's okay for people to fail. It's okay for people to fail, but it's okay. It's better when people fail with a certain level of accountability. What you want to do is if they fail, what's the accountability measure? What's, what's the what is the process for looking back and saying, this is what we've learned from it. That's the part that counts. It's taking that failure, picking it apart, saying, what did we learn from it? And how are we going to make sure that we don't do that again? Now, the next bit of this is really ensuring that we encourage collaboration across departments, even within teams. So you have certain organizations that are very competitive in nature. And when we have that, those layers of competitiveness, then what happens is people become siloed off. And when they become siloed off, they don't share. And when they don't share, they don't learn from each other. So it's this um, domino effect, if you will. So we want to break that habit of having people be being siloed. So how can we help managers build not only a culture of learning, but a culture of collaboration and a culture of creativity and innovation, because all of those things lead to learning within the workplace. So busting out those silos and helping people have a place where they can safely share. And a lot of people have, or a lot of organizations now have um, Teams or Slack or some other sort of collaborative space. And I would encourage them or anyone listening is to take great, greater care of those spaces, not just for uh, communicating projects, but for communicating learning. For example, if you have teams, do you have a channel where you're sharing new information, where you're sharing articles, where you're sharing um, evidence-based practices, you know, what are you doing within those spaces to create people or helping people come together? The third bit is to really encourage more curiosity because without curiosity, we're not learning. And if we're not encouraging people to dig deeper into the whys about certain things, then there's nothing to share, right? So curiosity for me underpins all of this. And how are we encouraging? How are we encouraging that? So when we say, uh, I found this article about negotiation skills. Well, why did you find this article important? What were the, the key tips? How can we use this within our teams? What are our next steps? Where can we place this article where people can find it, right? So it's questions upon questions about questions and encouraging people to dig deeper. And then what happens is, is that when we do that every single time, so when we accept people as people and we provide them with a safe place to fail, and then we couple that with encouraging them to collaborate, breaking out of silos. And when we underpin it, with curiosity elements 
and encourage managers to take the time to have these conversations with people and with their teams, then what happens is the roots, the roots of a learning culture start to take effect. They start to go deeper, right? And they become more sustainable. And that's what helps an organization grow. As L&D professionals, right? We think this is really important and it is really important. And because we think it's really important, we wanna control it, but it's not our place, right? Our place again is to help nurture and grow. It's not to solve the problem because we're not gonna be able to do it ourselves. So we have to get everybody activated, everybody on board. So don't think that you can do it yourself. Yeah, those are really good points because um, I think especially curiosity is something that we don't really talk about very much, especially mm -hmm. like corporate cultures. So that's really interesting. One thing we do talk about, especially at GameLearn, is the your first point, the learning from failure. Because like mm -hmm. we always say, our, we make video games for training and we say like, in these these games are basically like simulations of mm -hmm. generally real real life scenarios so it's an environment where you can fail safely sort of you know without mm -hmm. the real world con consequences of failure and then learn from those mistakes in that safe environment so yeah that's yeah really ab absolutely absolutely and when we think about businesses in general, and we think about curiosity and we think about exploration and innovation and practicing those skills, it's interesting how little businesses practice those particular skills. So if you think about, um, when you think about a firefighter, when a firefighter isn't fighting fires, tongue twister, what are they doing? They're practicing to fight fires that's now let's let's wrap our heads around that their main job responsibility you know when you say you've got one job their one job is to put out fires that's the one thing they do well of course with a variety of other things right but they're firefighters yet when they are down when they aren't doing that they practice to do that so that's something to take away there you know, we might be really good at business and we might be really good at um, conversations or collaboration or, um, you know, experimenting, but we don't practice it and we don't allow ourselves time to practice it. And learning takes practice, especially if you've been out of, you know, out of university for a while. So that's a skill, that's a habit that you have to build in consciously build in in order to take your organization to that that um, culture of learning that you would like to see it so if the game is built around what people do and the adventure around what they do then you are automatically encur encouraging that curious mindset aren't you and i think that's what good games do it's all about storytelling Every game is about telling a story of something. So what's what's the story behind what they're doing? And I think if you can um, marry that concept, then you've got something. You marry the concept of the story of the hero's journey behind what people do every day, and you make that game relevant to what they do, then you're built and you have that engagement factor built in and then it becomes interesting it is about having people being compelled and to have them have interest in what's going to happen next what is it that i'm going to learn next and and the game environment allows them to have that exploration of those feelings as they go through the game Learning experience designers and instructional designers, I think in the past, you could put those two things into very different buckets. Now they are coming together. They're almost entwined to where you can't tell one from the other because with all the tools that we have around us today, instructional designers 
should be thinking about the overall experience of the user, of the end user, going through whatever program it is that they are creating, be it a live program or an online program or a gamified situation. So they, they should be creating the designs that incorporate the overall learning experience. Human-centered design really is you know, what we should be doing and what most instructional designers are doing. And when you put the human in the center, then that automatically helps you think about what the overall experience is. The future of learning development is being tied to the business. As always, and it always should have been tied to the business, but in this case, if you, if you are not tied to the business goals, then you're going to go away. So a, a good L&D person will be a good business partner and they really want to investigate what the real business challenges are. So what you're doing is that you're creating this holistic, this holistic uh, path, if you will. And that's where L&D needs to have its mind's eye is where can they help the business seek improvements seek efficiencies and how can they help lift that up it might be through like self-directed you know areas it might be curating good content it may be um, producing or helping to produce um, learning in the workflow type of job aids or short videos or things like that you know so it's about really helping the progression of the business and i think that should be the future of L and D, you know, is to be that business partner and to strive to be that business partner. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have a seat at the table in order to do so. You can affect change where you sit. So think about the things that are within your control and the things that you can impact and focus there in order to bring your organization forward. Now, as far as tools, right now, the tools surrounding us, it's almost mind numbing how many tools are out there to help us in this particular quest. So it's just a matter then of using your imagination and having that curious mindset about how can we use certain tools, not only as they're designed, but beyond what they're designed, you know, and thinking, hmm, okay, so now the big thing happening all over the place is is chat gpt right so we've got this ai capability out there and how can that help l d right now well it could help you it could help you write better learning objectives or it could help you start planning learning outcomes it could help you start building storyboards create write in chat gpt create a storyboard about a person learning how to conduct a cold call for sales and it will give you an answer and then that's your starting point right so now you can say oh look at all of this let me rephrase the question to get a different answer and now i can oh i know what articles i should be searching for i know what videos i should be searching for i know what job aids i could be creating and so it's a great start so again it's about using the tools we have in front of us in a more imaginative way to help the business see their business goals so to me that's the future so the future is just being sure that we have the business as our north star and really becoming acquainted with the tools that are out there to take us to different levels.